This is a very high level overview of the Ivy Swinger 2 hardware. If you aren't very familiar with Ivy curves or how to trace them with resistive loads, you should first watch the original Ivy Swinger background videos. So the first generation Ivy Swinger is a lot like a light bulb load bank used to manually swing an IV curve. It has variable load, which is like the light bulbs. It has current and voltage meters. And in place of the human, it has a Raspberry Pi computer. And the results are written to a USB thumb drive. So IV2, IV Swinger 2 is similar, but what it uses for a variable load is quite different. So IV Swinger 2 uses a relay and a capacitor for the load. So between tests, the relay discharges the capacitor through a small bleed resistor. That's this. The controller switches the relay to connect the solar panel across the capacitor, which charges it up. So the way this works is that a discharge capacitor looks like a short circuit, looks like a zero resistance, and a fully charged capacitor looks like an open circuit, in other words, like an infinite resistance. And all the points in between, when the capacitor is charging, look like all the resistances between zero and infinity. So that's just what we need for a swing and IV curve, but it can take just a fraction of a second for a capacitor to charge up. So we can't leisurely do what we did before, which is switch a new load in, take a measurement, switch a new load in, take a measurement, and so forth. Instead, we throw the switch, and then it's off and running. We have to measure, 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 measure very, very fast. So how fast do the measurements have to be taken? Let's take two points on a real IV curve here and here. How much time passes between the first and the second? We can read the current and voltage of these two points directly off the graph. And the question is now, how can we calculate the time difference, delta t, between those two points? Physics to the rescue. So at any point in time, this equation tells us that the current into and out of the capacitor is equal to its capacitance times the rate of change of the voltage across it. So now for any two points that are reasonably close in time, their average current is approximately equal to the capacitance times the voltage difference, which is delta V between those two points, divided by the time difference between those two points, delta T. So we can now solve for delta T if we know the capacitance. We know the voltage difference and we know the average current. So IV Swinger 2 uses a 2,000 microfarad capacitance, which actually is two 1,000 microfarad capacitors in parallel. And so that is 0.002 farads. Delta V, from our example, one point was at 14 volts, the other was at 10 volts, so that's 4 volt delta V. They were both on the horizontal part of the graph at the beginning, and so the current was actually the same, so their average current was that current, which is 8 amps. And now we can calculate delta T, which was 0.02 farads times 4 volts over 8 amps, and that comes out to 0 0.001 seconds, which is one millisecond. So here, two other points over here on the same graph. They're about the same distance apart on the graph. Um, but there's a difference here. Um, the delta V up here was four volts, but here it's only about 1.6 volts, which is less than half of the voltage difference there was up there. Um, current, average current here is one's at six amps and the other is at seven amps. Uh, this is six, this is seven. So the average is 6.5 volts, which is actually pretty close to being the same current. So, but the fact that the voltage difference is so much um, larger 
uh, smaller, I mean, ends up with a delta t that is actually only about half of what our delta t was before. So at points where we have steep descents in the curve, um, but still at a fairly high current, those are the hardest to keep up with. So the Raspberry Pi that we use for Ivy Swinger 1 uh, isn't really very good for a real-time job like this. Um, it might decide to go off and do something else while we're trying to do this very time-sensitive job. So an Arduino is actually perfect. It doesn't have any R operating system. But we do now need a laptop to connect to it. Um, but the good thing is the laptop actually supplies the power, and we can run the app right on the laptop. So it means we get instant results, which is one of the really big value added. And the whole cost of parts, not including the laptop, is actually less than $50.